From a European country living in New York, California still felt like experiencing the same country, indeed. There have been some moments though while admiring stunning natural landscapes, driving through hills and vineyards, while hiking in wild nature. That left me wonder, wow, am I still in the United States? The biggest difference I've seen between California and many areas of the northeast of the United States is the different appreciation for nature. In the north of California, the area I've experienced this past May, no matter whether you are in a remote village or in the middle of San Francisco, wild nature has its own place in the life of humans. I've had many impressions, feelings and thoughts during the two weeks I spent in the Golden State. In this video, I will share some of them, together with some images I capture along my trip. I'm Mary Jane, and I make videos to raise ethical values such as environmental sustainability, responsible traveling, and rural development. A big thanks to the sponsors of this channel, my biggest fans, aka my patrons, who are the ones who make this video possible for all of you. Enjoy! These redwood trees have been in this world for hundreds of years, some for thousands. They live happy when they're very close to many other trees like them. In fact, they like to live in physical contact with each other at groups of two, three to five, six examples. They struggle to survive when they're alone Because of the frequent fires they have to face, they've developed an incredible system to resist these inevitable events. Their bark is thick and soft because it contains a lot of water. It also contains tannin that protects them from the fire instead of resin or pitched, which is highly flammable. Tanning is also what gives the bark that reddish color from which the redwoods get their name from. When a fire reaches the core of the redwood, it creates a cavity. The tree then adapts to his hollowed trunk by strengthening the base on the sides of the cavity to improve its stability. Fire is also essential to germination of redwoods. It clears up the ground for new seedlings and sterilizes it from fungal infections. Nature heals itself if the ecosystems are left undisturbed. The first impression I've had of a redwood forest is the incredible huge mass of wood because the trees can grow very large and their trunk in proportion to the rest of the plant is massive. That must have been a very widespread impression among people, because up to a few decades ago, forests have been almost completely cut down to forage for construction wood. Redwoods are impressive not only because they are unusually high, but also because their trunk is extremely straight. 
to me they look as if they were shot from the ground to the sky like a missile. Or as if they were thick ropes with a big weight attached at the bottom, hanging from the sky. Forget the knots of regular trees. Forget the weakly lines of secondary stems and branches. Redwoods go straight up to the sunlight on top of the forest. Someone I know calls them the legs of God. A forest of redwoods is very dense. Because the trees are so high and lose their lower branches, it also feels very spacious when you walk in it. And the air is always nice and cool, even in summer months. As I mentioned, these forests have a very high density of trees. Because of this, and because of the thick, soft bark of the redwoods, a forest like this is very quiet. Noises don't bounce much around. They're rather absorbed by all the wood. Redwood forests are silent places. The atmosphere underneath these giants is calming and relaxing. California State Road 1 is a very special road. It's a highway, a main road. Nonetheless, it has just the space for two cars to pass, one lane per direction. It's also the least straight highway you could imagine. It runs along the coast of the Pacific Ocean for more than 1,000 kilometers. It's never flat, but all up and down. And it's amazingly full of curves, left and right, right and left. It runs mostly on high cliffs. On one side, it shows the most stunning views on the Pacific Ocean. On the other side, countless hills of protected farmland. Basically, anything you could dream of in a road. I mentioned the protected farmland that's facing the ocean by the Highway 1 in the area I visited. I want to talk more about it and draw everyone's attention to this topic. I happen to drive quite a bit around the county of Marie. Most of my time, with my jaw dropped, honestly, admiring the beauty of the landscape and repeating, this is so much land, oh my god, this is so much land, <laughs> which I feel it's a very Italian thing to say on American territory. I also was surprised of the vicinity of so much beautiful farmland and ranch land to the big city of San Francisco and many towns around it. Living in the northeast of the country, areas left untouched by the urban sprawl was something I had not seen before. I soon discovered how that was possible and it happened when I saw this map hanging on the wall of a local cheese shop. This is the map that shows all the areas of Marine County that are protected as farmland. Marine Agricultural Land Trust is a program that started in 1980 by two women, a farmer and an environmentalist, who gathered a coalition of ranchers and community leaders to start a program to protect 
the future of farming in Marin County from mounting pressures for development. Today, after 32 years, the program protects 55,000 acres, equivalent to 22,000 hectares, of land. Grassland, wetlands, forests, creeks and streams. It could easily be used for urban development, but the citizens of the county decided to invest to preserve it as land for local agriculture. The program also helps the ranches and farms with practices to reduce drought and keep the soil healthy for future generations. An admirable example, in my opinion, that I wish would be followed by more and more highly urbanized areas of this country. Since that very first time I saw deers carelessly eating sprouts on the side of the road in Harriman State Park, just outside of New York City, literally minding their own business while our car was passing right next to them. Since that time, I've always knew that in America there is a very different relationship between humans and wildlife. In California, though, wildlife is thriving to an even different level. I have to thank my local host in California, Durs, oh, yeah, one of the patrons of this channel, for making me pay attention to the wild animals around me. I've never been a big observer or listener to birds and other forms of wildlife, and under the influence of Durs, I feel like I've made a giant step in the direction of appreciating more this part of the natural world. By walking in any town yard or hiking any path of California, you can immediately get the feeling of being only one example of one precise species of animal amongst, well, who knows how many others. Wild animals are everywhere around you. If you stop and pay attention to the sounds that fill up the air, you'll realize that there is so much going on dry leaves crackling, all types of bees loudly buzzing around blooming trees, birds chirping, sparrows, quails, blue jays, hummingbirds and woodpeckers, each one of them coming in a different shape and different colors. My favorite activity was to sit on a cliff by the ocean and observe the soaring birds. The most beautiful to look at were also the most abundant in these places. I believe they are called turkey vultures. They would soar alone or in group in big, slow circles, balancing their long, elegant black wings into the wind, following the flow of the air, going up and down. I could watch them for hours. I'm sure there were many other species roaming the sky above the ocean. The only one I could recognize, though, were the flocks of seagulls. Their black and white feathers would cut a beautifully contrasting silhouette against the intense blue sky. What a marvelous sight! By the coast, nice and grounded on the beach this time, was a cute and funny species that was my first time seeing in open nature. Seals. They come here in May for breeding, and they have their own protected nursery on the coast of California.
Did I mention the ocean? Oh yes, the Pacific Ocean. That limitless body of water that stretches all the way from America to Japan, from San Francisco to Hong Kong. When it comes to describe the Pacific Ocean, I lack proper words. I can only attempt to share how I experienced it. Sitting on the edge of a continent, staring in front of you at the all and the nothing. Your mind empty and full of everything. I'll be very blunt and very honest in this conclusion. Exploring these wild, open, incredible places in California has made me wonder, why do so many of us choose to live in big cities and work two or three jobs at a time to be able to afford the life there? We make our lives harder than they need to be. Get out there. Get out of the big city, a little house, a basic mean of transportation, a loving family and the caring community around you. What else do you need? What sense does it make to work so hard if you don't have the time to enjoy what you earn? Don't delay your well-being to when you will have time or to when you'll eventually retire. Ultimately, it's about balance. Learn to live with less stuff, less comforts, less social validation, but more meaning. Get out, go explore. I make these videos to inspire you to live your life, not so that you can live your life vicariously through my experiences. What you watch on screen is not real. It's just a replica of something that is out there and that is open for you to experience. Go live it fully. <laughs>